Here I've got a nice arithmetic problem from the 1987 American Invitational Mathematics exam, or the AIM. Okay, so let's see what we need to do here. So we want to reduce the following very complicated fraction. So we've got 10 to the 4th plus 324, 22 to the 4th plus 324, multiplied all the way up to 58 to the 4th plus 324. So notice there's a gap of 12 between 10 and 22, and that sets up the pattern. So the next term would be 34 to the 4th, and then the term after that would be 46 to the 4th, ending at 58 to the 4th. Then we've got a similar pattern in the denominator. We have 4 to the 4th plus 324, 16 to the 4th plus 324, all the way up to 52 to the 4th plus 324. So again, we've got a gap between those things raised to the fourth power of 12, and we have the same number of terms in the numerator and the denominator. There are five terms in the numerator and the denominator. Okay, so looking at this, it's not too hard to guess that the first thing that you want to do is factor 324. Because maybe if we factor 324, we could factor each of these nicely. Well, maybe there's a trick factorization built into this, I should say. Okay, so maybe we'll start with that note. So we'll notice that 324 is equal to, well, it's actually equal to four times 81, which is four, times 3 to the 4th. So obviously it's divisible by 4 because 24 is divisible by 4 and 300 is divisible by 4. And then it's divisible by 9 because 2 plus 4 is 6 plus 3 is 9. And then you can check again that after dividing out a 9 you get another thing that's divisible by 9. Okay, great. So from here, that means each of these looks like x to the 4 plus 4y to the 4. And that's obviously where x is equal to 58 in this case, 22 in that case, and 10 in the first case. And then y, well, that's going to be equal to 3. So let's maybe point that out. X equals whatever, and Y is always equal to 3 in this case. Well, maybe there's a factorization for something like this. And in fact, there is. And I think it's a named factorization. If you guys know the name for that factorization, maybe leave it in the comments. But I'll just write it out. So we'll notice one more thing, and that's X to the 4th plus 4Y to the 4th is equal to X squared plus something plus 2y squared, and then x squared plus something plus another 2y squared. Then you just have to figure out what's happening in the inside. And it's not too hard to check that in the inside you have minus 2xy and a plus 2xy. And then if you multiply that out, well, you get exactly this x to the fourth plus 4y to the fourth. Okay, so now we're going to introduce some notation. So I want to notice that this guy right here is equal to, well, that's a quadratic polynomial in two variables. We will call it f of x, y. But since y is always equal to 3, we'll actually just call it f of x, comma 3, but we'll shorten that as f of x. And then the same kind of thing here. We'll call this g of x, y. But then evaluating that at 3 for y, we'll call that g of x. Because notice y is always equal to 3 in our setup. Okay, so let's see what we can do from here. So let's take our goal object, which I'll just call goal. And notice that this term is equal to this left-hand side evaluated at 10 which means it's equal to this right-hand side evaluated at 10. But this right-hand side is f of x times g of x. So that means here we have f of 10 times g of 10. Okay, and then notice for this second bit, we'll have f of 22 times g of 22. So that would be from this term, all the way up to f of 58 times g of 58. 
Okay, and then similarly in the denominator, we have f of four times g of four, and then f of 16 times g of 16, all the way up to f of 52 times g of 52. Now it looks like we've just introduced some notation that's not super helpful, but maybe there's a relation between f and g, especially when we're having a difference of 12 between these two things. Now it looks like we've just complicated things by introducing these two new functions. But if you play around with this, you'll notice that there's some cancellation. And that cancellation follows a pattern. So we'll make a new observation. And that observation is that g of x minus 6 is equal to f of x. And you can check this very easily. Notice that g of x minus 6, well, that's just going to be x minus 6 squared minus 6 times x minus 6. Notice I'm plugging in 3 for y plus 18. But then if you were to multiply this out and simplify it, you would get exactly what you need it to be. In other words, you would get f of x. Well, that actually helps us quite a bit because now that means that g of four is the same thing as f of 10 because four is equal to 10 minus six. Likewise, g of 16 is equal to f of 22. And then we can play that whole game all the way down until we see that this g of 52 cancels out with this f of 58. And I should say that all of this stuff in the middle here also cancels with terms that are not written on the board. So let's see what we're left with when all of that is said and done. We're left with an f of 4 in the denominator and a g of 58 in the numerator. So let's see. That tells us that our goal object, which I'll just call goal again, is equal to g evaluated at 58 over f evaluated at 4. But now that's just simple arithmetic. And what we'll see is that the numerator is 3730 and the denominator is 10. So canceling that out, we see that our final answer is 373, which is in fact a prime number, which I think is like pretty nice that this all ends in a three digit prime number. And that's a good place to stop.